Um, and the second, and on food procurement specifically, and the second is a sort of more general sort of uh, commitment around just driving sustainable public sector practice across government. Um, and what we are, we're doing in taking those forwards is sort of bringing those together in relation to, to food procurement. Um, under the first of those bullets, there's a, a specific commitment which some of you may have uh, read about because there was some sort of press coverage around it over the summer, and that's that the government wants to ensure that the government and eventually the wider public sector um, procures food that meets British or equivalent production standards. Um, and uh, our aim is that we will be reporting on, on that for government, so central government departments, um, in June next year. Um, under the, the second bullet that we've, we've got here, there was a commitment that the um, government would publish government buying standards um, for a range of products, but including food. And I'll, I'll come on in a minute to what government buying standards are. Um, to, to sort of make it easier for people to understand, we've combined those two commitments. And so in, in developing the, the, the government buying standards, that will include that, that first commitment around buying food that meets British uh, or equivalent production standards. And I'll keep sort of uh, emphasizing the, the or equivalent in, um, in that commitment because uh, I'm sure you know sort of under sort of EU and UK procurement rules, um, something that said buy British wouldn't be permissible. But that commitment isn't around buying British, it's around buying food that meets the standards that we expect of British producers, but the food could come from, from anywhere else. So, uh, a classic example is around pig meat, where we have higher welfare standards in the UK. Um, it's not saying that you have to buy the, 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 the pig meat from the UK, but if you're buying pig meat, we want the public sector to buy pig meat that meets those standards. So it could still be produced on the, the EU, in the EU rather, um, but providing it's meeting those standards, that's, that's what we, we want. And there is also a caveat around that commitment that it should be at no extra cost, which I think fits in with the, uh, the theme that we were talking about in the previous, um, the previous presentation about the, need, the, the pressures that everyone is under at the moment. Um, so a bit more about government buying standards. Um, some of you may have come across these before. Um, government buying standards, they used to be called quick wins. They set sustainability standards for public sector procurement. So again, not just food, there's around 60 uh, goods and services that are, that are already covered by government buying standards. Um, the aim is to set standards that help um, reduce the environmental impacts over the whole life cycle of a product or service. Um, they're mandatory for central government departments and their agencies. Um, and for food, that covers sort of all central government departments, as you'd expect, but also the prison service and the Ministry of Defence. Um, and those are the two largest, um, in terms of food, the, the biggest spenders on food procurement. Um, within the standards, there are, there are two levels. So there's this, the, the mandatory level that we expect uh, government departments to meet. And then there's a best practice level, which are a bit more aspirational um, and uh, are there for, for those departments who want to sort of go, go a bit further. Um, they're not mandatory for the wider public sector, but we do try and promote them to the wider public sector. Um, and obviously, we would like the, sort of the wider public sector to adopt those standards um, in, their, in their procurement practices. Uh, they, they require cross-government agreement, so it's not just DEFRA that's deciding on these standards. There's a, there's a set process that we have to go through, um, and as I say, they, they need to be agreed uh, by all um, government departments. Um, and then just finally on, on these, and this is just a sort of a, a snapshot of the website, on the DEFRA website, that, um, that sort of explains government buying standards a bit more. Um, they, we use them as our way of delivering that EU commitment on green public procurement. So that's our, our if you want, our tool for, for delivering the, the EU commitments. So 
on the government buying standards for food, um, and this picks up the themes, those, some of the, those, those six themes that um, I mentioned earlier, um, the approach we've taken is that we want it to address a, a healthier diet, so it's not just around sort of uh, the environmental and social impacts of food. Um, animal health and welfare standards are a priority for, for this government as they were for, for the previous government. And I think that's a, a reflection of, of the, the feeling that consumers have around the issue of, of animal uh, welfare in, in this country. And of course, they, we want them to deliver in improving environmental impacts um, through the lifestyle, uh, life cycle of the, the, the product or service. Um, as I hinted at at the, at the beginning, we haven't started from scratch on this process. Um, some of you who've been around a, a while will know that there's been lots of initiatives around public sector food procurement, public sector food procurement initiative, which uh, I think it's, is, is, is no longer in, in the sense that there is this public, something called the PSFPI, but work on public sector food procurement is continuing. Um, there was more recently the, the Healthier Food Mark project that we were involved in with the Department of Health over the last couple of years. Um, so we've taken a lot of that work, the experience that we've had on that, the evaluation that we carried out on the PSFPI, um, the pilot projects that were, were undertaken on the Healthier Food Mark, um, and fed that into the work that we're now taking forward. Um, and we see all of that as a package. We don't think that it's, it makes sense to sort of look at the sort of nutritional aspects of a diet separate from the environmental ones. That was one of the findings that came out of the Food Matters report a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to speed up a bit because I've just looked at my little clock here and I'm uh, probably a little bit behind. Um, so nutrition, the rationale behind the, the nutritional criteria that we've developed for the government buying standards. Um, <coughs> Clearly, I work in DEFRA, this isn't my area of expertise, but we're working very closely with Department of Health and ex-FSA colleagues who are now in the Department of Health. Um, key areas that we want to address are fat, saturated fat, sugar and salt, not only in the sort of as part of the food ingredients, but also in relation to products where there's a high volume um, issue. And then changing catering practice and consumer purchasing patterns. So if you jiggle it around, put it all in, um, those are the sorts of areas that we'll have specific standards within the government buying standards um, to address. So uh, procuring foods that have lower salt, sugar, fat contents, uh, making sure menus have information around calorie and uh, allergen labelling, uh, catering practice, not using salt in when you're cooking uh, foods, uh, increasing provision of fruit and vegetable. I don't think there are any new areas there. They'll all be familiar with those people who are you know, involved in, in procuring food um, for, for the public sector. Uh, sustainability, again, sort of, you know, you, you're the theme, using global resources sustainably, uh, improving animal health, making sure that we don't sort of by products that uh, have a negative impact on the sort of the benefits that those sort of uh, natural uh, ecosystems provide, um, and more sort of a, from a social angle, supporting the, a competitive and resilient farming industry. Um, and again, if we chuck it in the mixer, uh, sort of a few fewer criteria here, but. Um, again, I don't think there's anything that will come as a surprise. Sort of animal welfare, seasonality of, of where you're using fresh produce, making sure that it's seasonal so that the impacts um, uh, of producing that food are, uh, are less. Uh, farm assurance schemes and higher environmental standards, and we're sort of talking about organic uh, food there and integrated farm management systems. And, and finally there in the bottom, uh, seafood from sustainable sources, so MSC certified fish. 